Welcome to your June 2023 DFW Real Estate Market Update. I'm Kyle Lindsay, your property geek, and I'm with the Smith team at eXp Realty. And I strive to keep everyone as informed as possible on what's really happening in the real estate market. There's a lot of headlines and clickbait out there, and I want to use data, facts, and figures to really show you the truth about what's happening so you can be better prepared to buy, sell, or invest in my market. If you have any questions after this, please drop a comment and I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. But without further ado, let's get into this. So today I will be talking about interest rates and how, what, why. Today I will be talking about interest rates and why they are so high and what kind of effect they're having on the market. I will talk about home prices, dispel some myths there about whether or not the market is going to crash. There's still a lot of uncertainty going on there. And lastly, I want to talk about the unicorn years and why those are distorting the truth. Well, one, what they are, but two, why and how they're distorting the truth about what's really going on in the markets. Stay tuned for all of that. It's going to be super informative and hopefully you get some great value out of it. So first off is interest rates. Unless you've had your head in the sand lately, you've been hearing about interest rates for a while. The Fed has been raising interest rates ever since last year, and it has plummeted the real estate market. Or has it? I'll show you a little bit later about why that may be a little overblown. But without a doubt, though, interest rates have risen dramatically, and it has had an effect. Let me show you something about why the interest rates are as high as they are and something people aren't really talking about right now, and that is the spread. Now, the spread is based on a 10-year treasury yield. Now, the 10-year treasury bond is what investors buy when they want to buy mortgage-backed securities. And the interest rates will normally trend right with the treasury yield. As you can see from this chart, it tracks extremely close to the 10-year treasury. And normally there's, on average, about a 1.72 spread. It's right around 1 1.7, 1 1.72 historically. There are periods of time, like we're in right now, where that spread is much higher. So currently, that spread on average is right under 3%. That's a big jump. That's not quite double, but almost double the average spread. And that has been going up and down. It's a little bit higher right now than it was earlier. And because of that, we are seeing much higher interest rates than we normally would. The treasury yield is actually pretty looking pretty good at the moment, but the spread is very high. So what causes the spread to be this high? There's really only one thing, and the only times that the spread approached or exceeded 300 basis points, think of basis points as percentage, so 300 basis points is 3%. The only times the spread approached or exceeded 300 basis points were during periods of high inflation or economic volatility, like those seen in the early 1980s or the great financial crisis of 2008, 2009. And here's a little chart to help illustrate that. What you're seeing, these circles are exactly what that quote was talking about. You're looking at the periods of high economic uncertainty, usually high inflation follows that, like we're seeing right now. And this is when they have been, the spread has really spiked. Luckily, we're not in the fives like it was back in the 1980s. But what we are seeing is just like right now, we are right around three basis or 3%, 300 basis points. How long will this continue? And when can we get some relief from this spread? The good news is that most economists are expecting that to, to start dropping soon. So here's a quote from the chief, one of the deputy chief economists at First American. It's reasonable to assume that the spread and therefore mortgage rates will retreat in the second half of the year if the Fed takes its foot off the monetary tightening pedal and provides investors with more certainty. However, it's unlikely that the spread will return to its historic average of 170 basis points as some risks are here to stay. Now, I'm not gonna dive into what those risks are, but what this is saying is that with a high degree of certainty, the spread will come down. With more certainty in the market, meaning the inflation numbers keep getting better, the economy keeps looking better, we will see interest rates drop, or really the spread will drop, and so interest rates will drop with them. But what she's also saying is that 
it will not get back to 170 basis points, at least not, not, at least not anytime soon. So what can we expect from interest rates? Where will they end up? If you look at what she's saying, in the middle tier is what we have right now. 3.2 spread over a 3.65 treasury yield. So we have about a 6.8 mortgage rate right now that looking like, as of today, that's looking like more like 6.7, so not too far off. If it went all the way down to the historic spread, which would be nice, we'd see about a 5.37 mortgage interest rate. If you take some predictions from The Economist and looking at what is more expected, maybe a 2.25 spread, well, you're looking at a 5.99% interest rate. And that is a lot better than the 6.7, 6.8. In fact, most economists and really most real estate agents, if you talk to them, we expect that if the mortgage interest rate does drop around 6% or lower, you are going to see a lot of pent-up buyer activity explode onto the market. What we can expect is bidding wars and buyers flocking over our inventory because right now we don't have very high inventory. Clickbait headlines might lead you to believe that there's a ton of inventory because they'll say something like, it's double what it was in 2022 or 2021. We'll talk about why that is misleading here when we start talking about the unicorn years. Just know that we have a low inventory right now, but we have high buyer demand. This buyer demand is being artificially held at bay with these high interest rates. And when they drop, you will see that buyer demand really come back onto the market in a fury. And we will definitely get back into a period of time that I myself didn't enjoy a ton. It's too frantic, and I don't like it when one side of the transaction has all of the power, but it is just, it is what it is, and while I helped a lot of my clients navigate that market before, I'll do it again. That leads me into discussion about home prices. Before I start talking about what home prices are doing currently and what you should really take away from home prices, what the trends are, I want to talk about a stat. I want to get nerdy with you for a minute, or if you'll allow me to, and talk about the median home price and why that is not a great measure in today's markets. In fact, this it's meaningless in today's market. In a normal market, this number holds a lot of weight because it tracks usually fairly evenly with what's going on in the market. Right now, that number is not very good because as interest rates go up, you start seeing a lot more low cost housing being sold. Let me show you the next slide here. So median prices are distorted by the mix and repeat sales indexes like Case-Shiller and FHFA are probably better for measuring prices. So what this is saying is that the median prices are being distorted by the mix of what is being sold. Hopefully this will start becoming a little bit more clear as I go through a few more of these slides because this is not the easiest concept to grasp, but it's important so when you're looking at real estate information, you really understand why when I say home prices are not falling here soon, you'll really kind of track and you'll understand what I'm saying. The median sales price measures the middle price of homes that are sold, meaning that half of the homes sold for a higher price and half sold for less. So it is not very useful for measuring home price appreciation because it is affected by the composition of homes that have sold. By composition, they mean the sales price, the number of homes have sold within that sales price. So when you look at a huge data set of, let's say, 10,000 homes, how many of those homes sold under 300,000 and how many sold over? If 75% of them sold at 300,000 or below, but the other 25% sold over a million dollars, well, your median home price is still in the 300,000s. So it can very, really distort what the market looks like. As I keep going, it is not very useful for measuring home price appreciation because it is affected by the composition of homes that have sold. For example, if more lower priced homes that have sold recently, the median sale price would decline because the middle home is now a lower priced home. Just like the example I just told you. Even if the value of each individual home is rising, and that's the really important part here. And this next slide really helps drive that home. So understanding the median home sales price, here's a simple way to explain it to anyone really. So if someone else you're speaking to doesn't quite grasp it, this is a good way to do it. So you have three coins in your pocket. Line them up in ascending value, lowest to highest. If you have one nickel and two dimes in your pocket, the median value of the coins, the middle one, is 10 cents. 
Now, if you have two nickels and one dime in your pocket, the median value of the coins in your pocket is now five cents because that's the middle, the one right in the middle. In both cases, a nickel is still worth five cents and a dime is still worth 10 cents. The value of each coin didn't change. In today's housing market, we are selling more of the less expensive homes, thus driving down the median price. It doesn't reflect the value of each house. That's the really the crux of this argument is that the median sales price is really tracking the trend of the price of homes that are selling, not exactly the value of those homes. Now, that's a fine line. It can get kind of confusing, but hopefully this has made it a little bit more clear that when interest rates spiked last year, what we saw was a lot of people rushing towards the lower priced homes. So across the market, the median sales price dropped. Did that mean that the value of the homes was going down? No, not necessarily. It just meant that we're selling more lower priced homes. So did we get a price drop? That's a great question. Did we actually lower the price? The value to that is yes, to an extent, but not as bad as people like wanted to make it look like. So there's really only one way to look at the home prices, and that is a seasonally adjusted month over month price drop. Because when you look year over year, that's where you can start getting very distorted views of what's happening. Um, what we're about to describe is the unicorn years, the 2021 and 2022 market. We saw huge price gains. So this is, these are the month over month price appreciations. So we saw 1.6, 1.9, 1.6, 1.6, very high appreciation month over month. And then we saw a drop, but you'll notice that these drops never got over one. And really there was only two really bad months. The rest were negative 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. We never saw a huge price drop months. 1% isn't great, but we'd already gained 2%. So then as we got into 2023, that trend slowed even more and then started reversing. And now we're seeing prices go back up. This is from Case Schiller. I have another one here that shows something very similar from FHFA. And you're seeing a very similar picture. This one actually is a little bit better. We're still seeing, even seeing some of these months where they were slightly positive. And then once again, we're seeing CoreLogic, another data, another big aggregator of data for the housing industry, showing something even better. Like these gains are much higher than the other ones we're showing. And when you line them all up and you look at them together, you're seeing basically the exact same data. Now, they're using slightly different data sets, and that's why you're seeing these difference in, in literal numbers here. But look at the trends. They were going up earlier in the year, interest rates started going up, and then the market slowed down, prices started depreciating, and now they're coming back up. Across the board, July saw a negative month, followed by a bunch of either flat or negative months up until January or February, and then we're seeing price appreciation. Now, it takes a couple months to aggregate all of this data and make sure it's done properly, so it's highly accurate, which means it's slow. So that's why we don't see April or May here yet, but when those start reporting, you should see this trend continue with home price appreciation positively. Most economists are predicting that over the next five years, you will see price appreciation, especially here in DFW where we have a very hot market, a lot of people moving here. Price appreciation should continue. I've seen it as high as close to 10% over the next five years. Um, whether that's true or not, no one has a crystal ball, but that is not a bad bet. I think that actually sounds to me a little on the low side. So again, I don't hold me to that, but I think that we're in the we're going to see some good price appreciation here soon. And I know what you may be thinking, and I know sometimes this may sound too good to be true because all the headlines you see tell you that the prices are falling. In fact, here's a consumer confidence index that home prices have weakened. This is what home this is what people, percent of Americans in each December who think prices will go down over the next 12 months. So back in December, they did the poll, 37%, so slightly more than a third of Americans thought home prices were going to go down. For the most part, they were right, because in January, in all those indexes we just saw, two out of the three, it went down. So they were right. But then they started going back up. So they're only right for one out of 12 months so far. I think that by the end of the year, you're, they're going to be proven wrong definitively. My message to you is when you're looking at home prices, don't believe the myths. We still have, as of April of this year, a little less than a third of Americans think that home prices will go down over the next 12 months. The crash has happened. 
and it didn't crash. It, it took a slight dip and started coming right back up. Here in DFW, especially when you start comparing year over year, it looks like we took a 20% dip. But we didn't really, when you seasonally adjust these numbers and you start looking at a month to month change, did prices dip a little bit? Yeah, sure, they did. But when you look at year over year, it's really, you're looking at gains. That's what you're really looking at. Um, when you're looking at these numbers and you're looking at the gains. So why do people think right now the market is, is much worse off than it really is? The reason is the unicorn years. The unicorn years started in 2020 Q2 and went through Q2 of 2022. So two years of the, the unicorn years. And these are dubbed this because they are outliers. They are not normal. And this is a really important to understand because what we're doing, and because these years are still so fresh in our minds, we are comparing our current market to the unicorn years, which is really doing our current market a disservice because it's much better than it, it seems like when you compare these. Now, let me show you this. I'm going to show you a bunch of different stats here and how these compare to normal years, the pre-unicorn years. When you look at this, what you're seeing here is the last the unicorn years compared to home price appreciation. 2022, according to Freddie Mac, we still had a 5% appreciation. Now, those last graphs you saw, the price appreciation was really high in the spring months. And then as the summer went on, it dipped. But we didn't see the dip as hard as the price appreciation. So overall, when you're looking at the same houses in the same neighborhoods, we saw price appreciation. That's pretty in line with the pre-unicorn years. Next, we'll look at the pending listings. And once again, this is through May of each year. We are right in line with the pre-unicorn years. In fact, we're doing better than everything but 2020. And 2020, you guys remember, we started seeing a little bit of that unicorn year there. I, actually, when you really think about it, through May, while the lockdown started happening in March and April, and so no one was doing anything. We even have a little bit of the pandemic lockdown into this 2020 number, and it is still higher than the others. We are doing very well this year so far as pending listings. When you look at showing traffic, this is where things start getting a little interesting and really speaks to the buyer demand that still lingers in our market. When you look at the pending or the showing traffic, we saw a dip in 2020, obviously because of the lockdowns that I was talking about. But when you look at this through March, Showing traffic was in the 160s, of just give or take. We're at 223. Now, not nearly as high as the unicorn years, but we're still doing very well as far as showing traffic, showing buyer demand. Here's another one demonstrating buyer demand, median days on market. Now, this is a spot where median does work very well as days on market because it is showing you the time that the homes are spent on market, not price. It's a little bit different. Anyway, in the unicorn years, this was very low, very low. In fact, here in DFW, this was in the single digits, not just 35 and 30. But across the nation, we saw in the 50s and a little bit over the 60s, we're still in 43. On average, our current days on market are even lower than this. This is just the median. The average is actually somewhere right around 15 or 16. I don't like to use the average on this one simply because there's a lot of people that will put their homes in the MLS just for a day because they actually sold it somewhere else. So it looks like a zero days on market and it really skews the average. So anyway... I like the 43 for median is pretty accurate for what you should be expecting in DFW right now. Homes for sale. Now, this is where I like to really get into the inventory discussion, because right now the headlines will tell you that we have a, of so many more homes than we've had previously. When you look at the unicorn years, that's true. When you go back to pre-unicorn years, I mean, on average, about a million homes when you average those out, but 1.2, 1.1, 927. We are still about half of what those unicorn years or pre-unicorn years, sorry, were giving us. So we are recovering, but we are not back to our pre-unicorn years yet as far as inventory goes for sure. Months of inventory, and this one is also interesting, it's still showing buyer demand. This is measuring how fast homes will sell versus how many we have. So the more homes we have in the market, the higher this is going to be, but the more buyers we have, the lower it's going to be. There's a balance there. So if a lot of homes flood the market, it'll go up. But if we have enough buyers to meet that demand, it'll either stay the same or drop. So easy to see that we are still much lower than our pre-unicorn years, even if we have gone up a little bit since then. Here in DFW, this number is actually about 2.6 right now. Last month, it was 2.5. So it's gone up slightly, but we are still trending below, well below two or well below three, I should say. And 
last but not least, the fewer foreclosures during the unicorn years. So understandably, there's always foreclosures in America. Now, this is obviously across the nation, so it's a pretty high number. And unfortunately, there will always be foreclosures. There will always be people that can't afford their house for one reason or another. And my heart goes out to those people. I wish there was better ways to handle that, but there will always be foreclosures in our current system. And so even during the unicorn years, when you could sell a house in three days, there was, we still had this many foreclosures. So when you look at this and the headlines will say, oh, foreclosures have doubled or nearly tripled. And while that's true, when you look at these numbers, we're still well below what it was in the pre-unicorn years. So this might recover. I hope not. I'd like to see less foreclosures just for the sake of the homeowners out there, but we might still see that continue to rise over the next year or two. But keep in mind that's still very much lower than it was in the pre-unicorn years. So what does this mean for you guys? So to wrap all this up nice and neat, my advice for buyers right now is that there's a lot of uncertainty in the market because of interest rates and home prices. No one wants to be the person that got the worst interest rate, and I get that. But right now is still a great window of opportunity to take advantage of a slower market while the interest rates are higher. While the market is recovering and there's still a lot of buyer demand, it's not nearly what it's going to be if these interest rates drop. Hopefully this information helps you realize that interest rates will be coming down and prices are at least stable, but more than likely they're going to start going up. So your home purchase is still a very good investment. Over the long term, you will be much better off buying the house than continuing to rent. It's still a good time to buy. And in fact, it might be a better time to buy now if you can afford the payment than it will be another couple months. Because as that interest rate goes down, you're going to have a lot more competition. Sellers. Real estate agents aren't supposed to say this, but now is not the best time to sell. It's not a bad time. So if you need to sell, I can help you do that. And then we can come up with a strategy to really maximize your gain. But as interest rates come down, like I've demonstrated, it might be a better time to sell. If you can wait three to six months, we can really time, hopefully, a surge in buyer demand and capitalize on getting, hopefully, multiple offers and things like that. Now, I'm not one to usually try to time the market. So if you're in a position you want to sell right now, it is still a good time. Months of inventory are low, days on market are low, and we are seeing at or above list price offers across the DFW market right now. So don't let me sway you into in wanting to wait to capitalize on a potential gain. But I am saying if you're in a situation where you are curious and not necessarily ready or in a hurry to sell, it might be worth the time to actually wait and kind of play that out. That's really more dependent on your specific situation. And I'd love to talk that through with you. So if you are just curious and not ready to actually sit down and have a full conversation, check out one of my summer buyer or seller guides or both. They're available. The link is in the description. You can sign up there and get a free copy of those and it, read those and get, get some more valuable insight into today's market and what you can do to get the most for selling your house and the best tips for buying your house, getting the best deal. Thank you for sticking with me this whole time. I really do appreciate it. And I would really appreciate if you would like the video, found this content helpful. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to be notified for my next video when that drops. Thanks. This has been, thank you and have a great day.